we continue with lecture 18 part 2 in the first part we talked about power series solutions near and ordinary point and now i'm going to show you another example on how to do that find the first five non-zero terms of the power series solution of the initial value problem uh, 1 minus x times second derivative of y plus x times first derivative of y minus y equal to 0, y0 equals minus 3, and y prime 0 equals 2. Uh, around the point x0, which is 0. So first we are going to find the power series solution, general solution, and then using the initial conditions, we are going to determine the constants. Okay, now uh, first we need to check whether x0 is an ordinary point. So for this equation, the function one, uh, px is 1 minus x, and the function qx is x, the function rx is minus 1. So qx over px, x over 1 minus x, and rx over px, uh, minus 1 over 1 minus x. Both functions are uh, differentiable, infinitely differentiable, at the point 0, and uh, they are equal to their Taylor series. Uh, if you remember from calculus, you can figure out the Taylor series of uh, these functions around 0. But um, since both functions are not defined and not continuous at x equals 1, so uh, these functions, both functions, have power series expansion. around x0 equals 0 for absolute value of x less than 1 because the interval around 0 cannot include the point 1 at x equals 1 both functions are uh, not defined so uh, the interval around 0 the maximum interval we can take has radius 1 and again uh, you you can uh, recall this from calculus that both functions are equal to their power series on the interval from minus 1 to 1. So x0 equals 0 um, is an ordinary point. Again, uh, this is going to be true for every rational function. All rational functions, remember rational means a fraction of two polynomials, like uh, q over uh, q, the functions p, q, and r are all polynomials. So when you take the fractions q over p, r over p, they are going to be rational functions. All rational functions are analytic. At the points, where they are defined. Okay, now, uh, so again, we have an ordinary point. So we consider y having this power series expansion 
n from 0 to infinity, a n x to the n. And just as before, we take the derivative. And since the first term in this expansion is a0 constant, the derivative starts from n equals 1. A n times derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. And similarly, the second derivative starts, the sum starts uh, from n equals 2 to infinity, a n, n, and derivative of x to the n minus 1 is n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2. And now we substitute these into the equation. So, um, substitute into what is our equation. Let's remember 1 minus xy double prime plus xy prime minus y equal to 0. So we multiply 1 minus x with the second derivative of y. Let me write the coefficient like this. And then we multiply x with the first derivative. And we take minus the function. This should be equal to 0. OK, so uh, let's distribute. First, multiply by 1 and then with minus x. If you multiply by 1, you have the series itself. Then minus, if you multiply with x, you multiply each term in the sum with x. So the power of x becomes x to the power n minus 1. And in the next term, again, uh, we multiply with x. So we multiply each term with x. So this becomes x to the n minus a n x to the n. And remember, this should be equal to 0. Next step, remember, make all the terms x to the n. So this is x to the n. This is x, x to the n. So to make it x to the n, uh, or maybe let's start from the first one. To make this x to the n, we need to shift the index down by 2. And then n's in the inside are shifted up by 2. So this becomes x to the n. In the second one, we need to shift the index down by 1. So inside, everything is shifted up by 1. And in the other two, we don't need to do anything. Now, in all the sums, we have x to the power n. But they all start from different points. Well, OK, two of them start from 0, two of them start from 1. So the ones which start from 0, they have an extra term, extra term for n equals 0. And the same thing here. So let's figure out that term first. In the first sum, if you put n equals 0, we have 2a2. And the rest, n starts from 1. Uh, this next one already starts from 1, so we don't do anything here. Same thing with the third sum. And for the last one, again, we take the term for n equals 0. For n equals 0, we have the term a0. 
and the rest of the sum n starts from 1. So we collect the two constant terms. We have 2a2 minus a0. This minus a0, 2a2. And all the rest of the sums, n starts from 1, and all of them have x to the n. So if you combine the terms, in the first one, the coefficient of x to the n is n plus 2, n plus 1, a n plus 2. And in the next one, minus n plus 1 times n, a n plus 1. And uh, next one, n, a n. And the last one, minus a n. This should be equal to 0. So uh, for this to be equal to 0, first of all, the constant term 2a2 minus a0 must be 0. And the coefficient of x to the n, which is n plus 2, n plus 1, a n plus 2, minus n plus 1, n, a n plus 1, plus n minus 1, a n, should be 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1. So if you write this last equation, if we solve this for a n plus 2, it is equal to n over n plus 2 times a n plus 1 minus n minus 1 over n plus 2 n plus 1 a n. Again, remember n starts from 1. All right. So remember, we write everything in terms of a0 and a1. Now, what about a2? From the first equation, a2 is a0 over 2. Uh, one moment. Let me check my work. See if I did this right. Uh, okay, so a0, a2 is a0 over 2. All right, now again, let me call this equation star. Oops. So in star, we take n equals 1. If we take n equals 1, it gives us a3. a3 is equal to, remember, n equals 1. So 1 third a2 minus uh, 0 times a1, right? Because n equals 1. So this is uh, a2 over 3. But remember, a2 is a0 over 2. So this is a0 over 3 times 2. Uh, I'm going to write this as 3 factorial. Uh, now use n equals 2. Again, in star, it gives me a4. a4, uh, n equals 2, right? So 2 over uh, 4, a3, minus 1 over uh, 4 times 3, a2, right? OK. So. 2 over 4 is 1 half, and a3 from the previous step is a0 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 4 times 3. Uh, a2 is, what is a2? a0 over 2. Okay, so what does that give us? Uh, let me see. I have uh, yes, okay, um, maybe I shouldn't have, okay, let me keep in the first term for this way. So both denominators are 4 factorial, 
two A0 minus A0, so that gives me A0 over four factorial, right? Okay, now for n equals three, A5, what is A5? A5, all right, in star, we are using n equals three, so 3 over 5, A, 4, minus 4 over, right, n equals 3, I'm sorry, uh, 3 minus 1, uh, 2, um, over 5 times 4, A, 3. Okay. So 3 over 5, what is A4? A4 is A0 over 4 factorial, minus 2 over 5 times 4. What is A3? A3 is A0 over 3 factorial. So we have A0 over 5 factorial. So I guess you see the pattern uh, for n greater than or equal to uh, 1, a n plus 2 is a 0 over n plus 2 factorial for n greater than or equal to 1. Or we can write the same thing as a n is a 0 over n factorial for n greater than or equal to 3. So um, remember y is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, a3x cubed, a4x to the 4, and so on. a0 and a1 stay as they are. Remember we solved for a2. A2 is A0 over 2. You can consider 2 as 2 factorial, so that formula also works for uh, n equals 1. Uh, plus A3 is, I'm sorry, A0 over 2, x squared. A3 is A0 over 3 factorial, x cubed. A4 is A0 over 4 factorial, x to the 4, and so on. So with the term A0, we have the sum 1 plus A0 over 2 factorial x squared, I'm sorry, 1 over, I take the x A0 out, plus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed, and with A1, we have only one term, x. So the two independent solutions I'm having trouble with arrows. Come on. Yeah. So uh, the first solution, y1, is the function in front of a0. It is the sum 1 plus. I can write the sum in the summation notation and from 2 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. And the second solution you see is the polynomial x. So in this way, we get a polynomial solution, x of the differential equation, and also and an infinite sum, uh, infinite sum like this. Okay. All right. Um, now, um, so our general solution, y is uh, a0 times y1 plus a1 times y2. And now to find uh, a0 and a1, we use to find a0 and a1, we use the initial conditions.
uh, we use the initial conditions. Uh, what are the initial conditions? Y zero equals minus three and Y prime zero equals two. Okay. So uh, Y zero equals minus three gives us minus three equals A zero times Y one of zero plus A one Y two of zero. Now y one of zero, uh, this is y one, remember. So if you substitute x equals zero, all the terms except the first one is zero, and the first one is one. Uh, a one, y two, remember y two is x, so y two of zero is zero. So we get a zero equals minus three. Um, for the next condition, y prime zero equals two, we need the derivative of y. So derivative of y, a zero times y one prime plus a one times y two prime. So what is y one prime? We take derivative uh, term by term. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of one over two times x squared is x plus Derivative of one over three factorial x cubed is one half x squared and so on. Uh, plus a one times y two prime, y two is x, so y two prime is one. Now uh, y prime zero equals two means we substitute two for y prime and zero for x. When you substitute zero for x, the term with a zero disappears, we have only a one. So a one equals two. So this means our solution y is uh, our solution. Oops, what's happening? Um, a0, which is minus 3 times y1, plus a1, which is 2 times y2. So minus 3 times the sum, uh, let's remember y1, what was it? 1 plus the sum n from 2 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial, plus 2x. Uh, so you're done here, and in fact, you don't have to write this uh, solution in the summation notation. You can keep, you can keep uh, uh, the notation one plus um, x squared over two, x cubed over three factorial plus two x. Uh, so this is a perfectly good answer. But I want to show you something extra uh, because you may remember the sum n from 2 to infinity x to the n over n factorial. Uh, we use the sum in this course also, if you remember. This is the exponential function, e to the x. But the thing is, uh, for the exponential function, the sum starts from 0, not um, Two. So uh, if we write a term with n equals zero, for n equals zero, we have the first term is one. For n equals one, the term is just x, and in the rest of the terms, n starts from two. So uh, we can write this infinite sum in terms of the exponential function. It is e to the x minus 1 minus x. Um, 
wait, where does, okay, yes. So this is the infinite sum. So uh, our first solution, y1, remember it was one plus this infinite sum. So it is one plus e to the x minus one minus x. So e to the x minus x. And remember the second solution, it was x. So in the first one, we have already x. So the functions, we, you can only take e to the x, the functions, e to the x and x, because y1 and y2 are solutions. So by the principle of superposition, their sum is also a solution. So y1 plus y2 is e to the x. So the functions e to the x and x are the two independent solutions. Of one minus x y double prime plus x y prime minus y equal to zero, right? Was the equation one minus x y double prime plus x y prime minus y equal zero. So you can write the solution as c1 e to the x plus c2 x and uh, use the conditions. So um, uh, y0 equals minus 3. So minus 3 equals e to the 0 is 1 and x is 0. So c1 is minus 3. Uh, y prime is c1 e to the x plus c2. So y prime 0 is 2. So 2 equals e to the 0 is 1, c1 plus c2. But c1 is, c1 is, so 2 equals c1, but c1 is minus 3 plus c2. So c2 is 5. So the solution is, minus three e to the x plus five x. You can also write the solution in this explicit form. So we started uh, with finding, uh, trying to find a power series solution, but the power series we found in this example is a series we know from before, the series of the exponential function e to the x, and using that knowledge, we can figure out uh, the independent solutions of the ODE to be e to the x and x. Okay, so this is how we find power series solutions around ordinary points. Uh, so the next question is, of course, what about the singular points? So next time, uh, we will see how to write um, solutions around singular points. We cannot uh, write them as power series anymore because around singular points, we don't have power series. So we will need to modify uh, the power series and to see how, uh, first, we are going to consider a special case um, of what is called the Euler equation. And using the solution of the earlier equation, we will try to develop uh, a method to find solutions around singular points. Uh, so that's all for lecture 18. Uh, talk to you later.